So I'm Naina and I'm, uh, I'm from South India and I live in Salzburg since three and a half years now, a little bit more maybe. And I'm a, I'm a dancer and a choreographer and I also teach dance and, and movement uh, workshops and classes. Um, I also studied journalism and I worked as a journalist for a short time and I'm 30 years old. I didn't plan to really stay here when I first moved to Salzburg. I had an intention of coming here for a year, finishing my course and leaving. But somehow um, I had a feeling that the one year I spent here was not, um, it was not a full experience, a rounded experience, because I spent, it, it was really a short period of time that I spent here, and I spent most of it in the school. So I would have liked to spend more time with the locals and people and uh, working here and seeing what kind of a resonance my work would bring. And therefore I stayed to, uh, decided to stay longer here than, than planned. I didn't have doubt so much because I, I knew that this was the um, um, best decision I could make at that point in time. But expectation-wise, I, I think I did have unconscious expectations, not conscious ones. Uh, I had lived and already lived in Amsterdam before and I had traveled around Europe a little bit, mostly Western Europe. And um, I had visited the UK and I performed in the UK. So I had a certain idea of what um, living in Europe might mean. But somehow, obviously, that was a naive thing to think because uh, every country is different and every culture comes with a different kind of a setup and a feel to it. And when I uh, and also the the geography matters. And when I moved to Salzburg, when I landed in Salzburg for the first time, I remember thinking, "Oh my God, I have never seen so many mountains around before." It was really a daunting feeling. It was so funny now when I think of it, because um, I think it was mainly because I come from a really flat land. And I had also experienced flatter Europe. If you're living in the Netherlands, it's really flat. And I had a different experience of my landscape here. And then when I moved to Salzburg, somehow everything was much more daunting and above me. And I couldn't see the skyline so much. And, um, and the place is also much smaller than you can expect. And lifestyle is different. So somehow I felt my expectations, which I didn't even know I had, break, which was probably that I expected it to be much more flatter and maybe I expected people to be different given my prior experience of Europe, but of course it was not like this. Where I live now is a, it's a WG, a Wohngemeinschaft, living community and I live with um, three other people and I have, I'm living with them as long since since I'm in Salzburg, almost, um, and and we have already changed two homes. Now we live in a in an apartment in Parsh, and it's a it's a really nice home for us. I think, especially because we really understand each other's ways of living and somehow even each other's cultures and not only um, maybe national cultures, but also living culture of how we live, what we eat, what we like, what we don't like, and what is annoying for each one of us, what is each one of our quirks, you know? So somehow we, I think we created a family with each other, with the four of us. It's also somehow a kind of a stability. Um, and, um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's where I live at the moment, in this apartment. I think what I really like about uh, Salzburg is the combination of, uh, of, an, of a city life together with nature. This is something I really, really missed somehow when I lived in a city. I come from a very small town and I, I am more of a nature's person than, than really with a lot of people, even though I enjoy people's company. 
but somehow um, in big cities in India it's so that it's very urban life like cities everywhere in the world very urban very fast very little nature a lot of pollution a lot of traffic a lot of people very ambitious people and somehow it gives a sense of um, stress it creates a lot of stress and I'm a little bit hypersensitive to stimulus so I, I really need the quiet of the nature to to calm down and also for my creative work and for that I find Salzburg an amazing place because it's so closely um, the nature is so close by and I can I can be in the nature while being in the city and that is something I really like about Salzburg. Uh, what I would like to change in Salzburg it's uh, it's an ambitious thing to say but I think I would really like some more lightness and openness to new things in Salzburg. Salzburg is very classical and very conservative in that sense. It can be very, um, well, I obviously speak from an artist's point of view and I see that it's very classical in its art and in how people are and what they dress and there are so many young people in Salzburg because of the universities and stuff and I think that's the only place we can find real diversity. Whereas when it comes to mainstream life in Salzburg as such, I find it much more um, um, focused on somehow closed a little bit and I would have wished for a little more openness and lightness and experimentation with culture and lifestyle. Yeah, I don't really necessarily feel like I'm Indian, whatever that means. And in some other moments, I do feel very strongly as I'm Indian. There was a time two years ago when in summer, I, I, I realized that, wow, I really miss wearing my Indian traditional outfit of sari. And I thought, wow, since I'm in Salzburg, I really don't wear. And then I thought, this is ridiculous. Why can't I wear it? You know, I can just wear it and if people, and then I realized I was scared to wear it because I was scared of being typecasted as an Indian person who is probably narrow-minded and hangs out only with Indian people. And then I asked myself, do I do this? No, not really. I live with other people who are not Indian and I, I don't really, I'm not that person. So if other people are thinking that, that's really their problem. So maybe it's my chance to just experience myself as I want to. And then I wore this Indian um, outfit and I was going to a festival somewhere to watch a performance. And I know I had to walk all the way because I couldn't ride my bicycle with this outfit. And I noticed that a lot of people were looking at me and they had this familiar, you know, shine in their eye of looking at, ah, oh, there is an Indian person. But also not because they realized that I was really young and I was watching this thing and I was with a friend who was white. So it was clear that we were not, I was not anymore this only traditional Indian girl, but also someone who was across uh, genres and definitions. And it was really nice and I realized, wow, I can make this normal. This can be my normality that I'm wearing Indian clothes and I'm somewhere else that is not India. I can cook Indian food at home with these extreme spices and all of that and still be the person that I want to be, not defined by what I do, but who I am, which can be a wide range of things. So. In that sense, I think identity is a very fluid thing and it can be contradicting things as opposed to what we think it should be, you know. And that is, that is for me a new learning experience actually, something that I learned newly after I moved to Salzburg. because association of what Indian means has to do, especially if you if coming from a non-Indian person, for them it is what you wear, maybe also your skin color, but there are brown people outside of India as well, maybe in Pakistan or Bangladesh or somewhere else. And um, uh, may, maybe what you wear, your clothes, maybe the thing you wear on your forehead and uh, the food you cook or the dances you do and all of this stuff. Mm. But the thing is, I really moved away from what is traditionally Indian quite long ago already. I moved away from classical Indian dance, even though I'm trained in it. And I, I tried a lot of experimental dance, contemporary dance and all of this. I'm working with contemporary dancers from Europe who have nothing to do with Indian dance. And I don't necessarily always wear Indian clothes. And even though I realized at one point that 
it's not that just because I don't wear Indian clothes, I don't feel Indian, or it's not that I don't, I don't w not wear Indian clothes because I want to prove that I'm not Indian because I really enjoy wearing Indian clothes, even though the association with that is something that of traditional. But I don't really completely cut myself from what is traditional, and it doesn't, I don't feel that tradition really blocks me from who I am. It did when I was younger. I felt like, oh, I, got, I felt caught in these ideas of tradition. But over a period of time, when you find freedom to be whoever you are and when you find freedom for self-expression in every, any way, then tr even tradition becomes part of your identity because you have the freedom to enter it and leave it. And, and I, f I think somehow I found that for myself.